Welcome everyone, they call me Introtechout, and ever since I first booted up Dreams, one dark thought loomed in the back of my mind. I knew that no matter what kind of game I would end up making, eventually I would have to do something with artificial intelligence. This thought terrified me to no end, because even the highest budget, most modern AAA titles of today don't really have great AI most of the time. So for months, I silently hoped that someone else would just publish an enemy AI character that I could drop into my scene and give no further thought beyond that. But alas, this didn't happen, so I took matters into my own hands. Yes, at last I created an enemy AI template that works with any player character and can be dropped into any scene almost without requiring any preparation. And it was glorious. Dreamers from all over the world came together to check out the template and appreciate the logic that held it all together. Oh. Okay, this is all slightly exaggerated, but I did create a basic enemy character that even though it's really simple and flawed in many ways, can still pose a challenge. I'm quite proud of it, because I genuinely did not look forward to creating combat AI. But this video I will go into how you can use this template yourself if you want to have enemies in your game. This enemy is of course a shooting one, so it's best suited for shooters. If you want other type of enemies, I will probably make another video on this topic, but then I'll dive into how my AI works. You can use that knowledge to create your own AI if you have no idea where to start. Let's get into it. First of all, this template I talked about is called ITT's Basic Shooting Enemy Template. You can find it in the Dreamiverse. What this puppet basically does is it runs around the battlefield, shoots at the player at random intervals and reloads if necessary. It also gets into cover if it comes across it and tries to run towards the player to hit them if they come too close. You can use this puppet as a template, but you can also transfer the AI to your own character if you've already made one. More on that later. First, what steps do we have to run through to get this thing to work? I'll show through an example. In the background, you see the scene called Multiple Weapon FPS Test by the dreamer ADM0. You might want to follow him if you're interested in FPS games. He has also created a first person shooter character and he went all in on different weapons in contrast with my FPS template, which goes all in on mechanics. Anyway, to prove that my template works for any character, I'm using ADM0 scene. First, you obviously need to stamp my template in your scene. At this point, the enemy should immediately work. You might notice upon testing though, that the enemy stays relatively close to its starting position. This is the only thing you need to fix before you can start fully testing your level. To fix this, remove the bundle of microchips from the group it's in and spread the small microchips around your scene. All these chips are waypoints and the AI will randomly choose one of these chips to walk to at random intervals. You can spread them around in one big circle and the template will still work, but you can also use a couple to place at key locations where you would like the enemies to stand every once in a while. One thing I want to clarify about these waypoints as a side note is that if they're spread out enough, the enemies will almost never reach them before they change the combat mode. So it's very rare for multiple enemies to stand in the same location. I made sure of that. Maybe you have noticed that all the microchips are attached to a big pink one. This one contains just a switch, which either activates or deactivates the waypoints. I did this so you can easily create multiple combat scenarios within one scene. You don't want the puppets to try to walk all the way back to the waypoints at the beginning of a level when you have the second encounter. If your level is really big, you can also divide your combat area into multiple sections with different waypoints and only activate the ones in the area where the player is standing, so it looks like the enemies actively follow the player. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Easy right? Now you can clone the main puppets a couple of times and you have your combat encounter. Do keep in mind that you will want to only copy the living puppets while scoped into the AI group. If you clone the whole group, it will rapidly and unnecessarily increase the thermo to a really high level. If you just copy one puppet, the emitters will still reference to the existing objects. I really hope you appreciate what this all means though. It means that you can create entire shooter games even if you only have skills in level design because the gameplay has been taken care of. At this point, if you want to make a first person shooter game or an interactive multiplayer map showcase, all you have to do is stamp my FPS template, stamp the enemy AI template, delete the manuals, activate a compatibility switch and spread some microchips around. It's incredible how easy it is to create a functioning game now. But even though this game is now technically playable, there are still a couple things you might want to take a look at. First of all, in the microchip on the enemy you will find a switch that determines if the enemy uses a hitscan or projectile weapon. Hitscan is default, because the projectile has a lot of little issues. Getting hit by these projectiles can send you flying, dodging them is really easy because the enemy doesn't aim ahead of you, and the biggest problem, 
the puppet can't aim up or down in this mode. This projectile enemy can still be used, I used it myself in my Arena of Disco Dream, but it works best in scenes with little height variation and in combination with hitscan enemies to force player movement. Fighting a single projectile enemy on a steep hill is a recipe for disaster, basically. Hitscan, however, is also not perfect. It has the problem that you don't see anything physically travel towards you when you get hit, which can feel unfair. You need to rely on really good sound design to make sure players can always hear where the shots are coming from. You can do this by tweaking the sound effects you want to use and setting them to 3D pan. Make the sphere in which the sound is the loudest quite big and then set the drop off so you can still hear the shots from the other side of the combat arena. The standard sound effects I've used for shooting are quite cartoony, so I definitely recommend trying to find some new effects if you don't like the sound of these. If you want to change the amount of damage the puppet does, and you will probably want to because these enemies are quite deadly in large numbers, you can change the health modifiers in the spheres next to the puppet. Toggle preview invisibility off if you don't see them. One sphere is for hitscan, one for projectile. The groups have been given names, so it should be easy to figure out which one you need to tweak. Also, it might be a good idea to give the health manager of the player a small cooldown of 0.1 or 0.2 seconds, so you don't take huge amounts of damage when getting hit by multiple enemies at the same time. Another thing. Auto jump is activated by default for this puppet, but it often results in the puppet jumping when it shouldn't. If this starts bothering you, you can deactivate this, but now the puppet won't jump at all anymore. Until a better system gets implemented by either me or Media Molecule, this is just something annoying we have to deal with. But let's now shift gear to take a look at the cosmetic side of things. Of course your enemy can be just a blank puppet, with maybe a couple style changes, like the ones in my Arena of Disco game, but you probably want something more complex. To make something more complex, it's possible to sculpt your enemy design from the template, just scope into the body parts and start sculpting away. Something really important to keep in mind is the ragdoll. When the puppet dies, a separate identical model is spawned that falls convincingly to the ground. This model isn't automatically updated with the changes you make to the actual enemy, so you have to make the same cosmetic changes to the ragdoll yourself, or you can make a completely new one. Making a ragdoll is as easy as selecting all the separate body parts of the puppet while scoped into it, and cloning them and scoping them out. Then set every body part to collidable and group the whole thing. It's also important to apply some dampening to the connectors in the puppet's body, so set them to visible in the visibility tab, select all the connectors by double tapping X when scoped into the group, and then tweak them and set them to 80% or something like that. It's also definitely recommended to place a timer with a destroyer connected to it on the puppet, because even dead puppets can cause severe slowdown if you have enough of them. Now make the emitter in this template emit this ragdoll and we're done! Of course you don't have to spawn a ragdoll, you can also spawn an explosion or other effect that makes the enemy vanish, which is better for thermo anyway. But what if you have already modeled an enemy you'd like to use? In this case we'll just transfer the AI. Just select every imported microchip in the enemy template, as seen in this video right now, and move them to your new enemy model. It's very important to move the logic and not clone it, because we need to move a separate but connected microchip from the head of the template to the head of your new character. The enemy shoots from this microchip. But now you have to make a ragdoll again as instructed earlier, and that's pretty much it. Well, that should be it, but Dreams does have a tendency to mess up the orientation of gadgets if you move them. This means you might have to tweak all the rotators and laser scopes in the pathfinding microchip. Just place a new enemy template in your scene for reference and check which way every one of these gadgets should be pointing. By the way, the pathfinding that this character uses was not made by me. It was made by the dreamer Ernmazing, and it's absolutely fantastic. If you are also annoyed with the standard puppet who constantly gets stuck on walls while trying to follow you, you might want to check out this dreamer and use their logic as well. There's another thing I'd like to quickly go into though, the muzzle flash. I first tried giving enemies the same muzzle flash as the player because I'm a big fan of how it looks, but for some reason the emitter kept bugging out and putting the muzzle flash in the wrong location. So I opted for another solution, and that's to place an invisible cylinder on the end of the gun, which I make visible and set to 100% brightness every time a shot is fired. You can do this too by utilizing the shot fired node available on the main logic board of the puppet. Next up, ammo and reloading. In the stand and fight microchip, in combat AI, you can find a counter which specifies the amount of ammo the puppet can fire before needing to reload. The reload animation timeline was placed next to the stand and fight microchip. Go a bit further down and you'll also find an animation timeline for melee. The problem with animations is that they have a tendency to get overridden by the arm sway animations for the puppet itself. 
I haven't really found a way yet to properly animate puppets without replacing entire body parts like with my first person stuff, so I can't really give too many tips here. With my Arena of Disco game, I just made the enemies light up and emit a fiery sound indicating that you're about to get hit. Only two things left I want to touch on. First of all, cover. If you scope into my template, you'll see an orange microchip along with the waypoints I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Cover is really simple. Place this orange microchip on a piece of cover and a tag will activate as long as the player is on the other side of it. If an enemy comes across this tag, it will kneel down and pop up and shoot at the player at random intervals. It's of course handy to put a waypoint at the location of the cover as well, or there's only a small chance an enemy will come across it. There's a small problem with the cover though, and that's if your cover is really thin, the enemies could end up going into cover on the wrong side, fully opening them up for attack. To lessen the chance of this happening, you might want to remove the tag from the cover microchip and place it a bit further back and sometimes even underground. This leaves only one topic remaining. Spawning. Because having more than 4 or 5 enemies in your game can absolutely kill the frame rate, you'll probably want some more enemies to spawn in during a firefight. The method that I find the easiest is to place a tag in the microchip of the enemy. I'll give it the name Enemy. Now we use an emitter to emit this enemy every time a signal is received by setting it to once. Then we'll put a trigger zone in the game, make it search for this tag and set the zone to scene. Additionally, we'll set the amount it searches for to 4. Now we'll just put a NOT gate behind it, connect it to a timer and make it reset itself once it's full. Lastly, connect the same output from the timer to the emitter. Now as long as the trigger zone does not see 4 enemies, it will spawn a new one every 5 seconds. But once it does see 4 enemies, the timer is stopped and no new ones are spawned. Of course you can make this system a bit fancier, like spawning enemies faster when there are less than 2 of them like I did in my Arena of Disco Dream, but this is more or less the basics. You can also end a battle by having a tag in the ragdolls that gets activated for a very short duration with a pulse once it's emitted. Then make a trigger zone search for this tag and add a counter to it. Then you can make the spawning of the enemies end once you have for example killed 10 of them. But I hope this all was useful because this is all I wanted to talk about today. For now I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.